Uh, more than 200,000 people have signed a petition demanding the government drops vaccine passes in the UK. The names were handed to number 10 Downing Street just an hour ago. Campaigners from a group called the Together Declaration and a number of MPs, they included the Tory Steve Baker. The group represents more than 200 organisations, business groups, campaigners and professionals who came together because of their misgivings about vaccine passports. Well, let's turn to uh, Steve James, the critical care consultant who made headlines when he was filmed explaining to the health secretary, Sajid Javid, why he didn't feel that he, as a clinician, ought to be vaccinated. Uh, he joins me now, as you see. Steve James, thanks so much for joining us. We talked to Kate Goodman uh, last week. I'm not, I'm not sure you, you, that name means anything to you. It didn't to, to me until last week. But she spoke very eloquently about how she'd wanted to be a doctor from the age of five. She loved being a doctor. She'd recently taken on a mortgage. Why do I say all that? Because she's unvaccinated and she, in common with anything up to 80,000, 90,000 NHS staff from April the 1st, will lose her job. I'm guessing that's the boat you're in too. That's the boat I'm in as well, yes. Why have you taken this position? I mean, I have to say, watching your intervention with Sajid Javid, the health secretary, on the wards was, an ex I think, an extraordinary act of, of bravery. Other, others will think it was, was folly. Uh, and I'm sure some of them have made it clear to you that they feel you're not uh, standing up for a set of principles which, which you ought to. What do you say to them? I would say that uh, the most important thing that I had the opportunity to do was to stand up for a lot of voices that are not represented. Um, of course, if you speak out in a position like mine, you also in some ways misrepresent the views of people who haven't asked you to speak on their behalf. But there's a big issue in the country with a lot of people not being heard, uh, people who don't think the vaccine mandates are a good idea for members of the public, uh, so uh, vaccine passports for members of the public, uh, or that the NHS vaccine mandate is a good idea. What do you say to those people who argue that though you may be a, you know, no, showing no visible symptoms, you could be a carrier and given your proximity to vulnerable people, that is a hazard? That's true, but we know that people who are vaccinated, even triple vaccinated, can also be carriers of the virus. Um, there are lots of measures that are in place in hospitals to make sure that transmission is as low as possible. Um, some places have introduced testing, but the use of PPE is very important. One of the most important things that can be done is that if you've got any symptoms, you stay at home and don't go near to anybody who's vulnerable. What was striking talking to Kate Goodman was the sense in which uh, it was self-evident that she wasn't a swivel-eyed loon. She very much believed in the the efficacy of the vaccine, the science behind it, particularly for vulnerable and older people. And, and it, it becomes a complication, doesn't it, in this, in this conversation that's at times become more and more binary when people like her, when people like you, who are, you know, cannot be consigned to the dustbin of anti-vax madness, say what you have to say. It makes people question things which hitherto they'd considered certainties. Yeah, well, we've, we've come from a situation where, we're, with the initial phase of the plan to manage the, the virus, uh, it was fairly clear what to do to offer the vaccine at an early stage to the elderly, to the vulnerable. That was very clear. To make it available to others who were concerned about having it, that was clear. But then, for me, there started to be this sort of edging towards um, restrictions on what you could do in society if you were or were not vaccinated. I think, you know, asking people who are symptomatic to stay at home, uh, uh, that's absolutely important as it probably is for most transmittable diseases. But more and more people started to feel that they're being uh, coerced into doing certain things. And I think that the country's really got behind the idea that to take 100,000 or what is it, 80 or 90,000 members of the NHS, people who've been at work during the pandemic, um, who've considered the situation with COVID, who've thought for themselves about whether they want to have a vaccine or not. Mm. That's a long and considered um, process for many people. And they've then chosen not to do that. Uh, those people, those professionals, I think there's a lack of respect for the, uh, for the professionalism, for the dignity that those people have got uh, to make a valid decision that they don't think it's right to have the vaccine. Just considering the fates of those 80 or 90,000 and indeed how the NHS will cope 
without them. Kate Goodman talked about the, the importance of retaining physical autonomy, that the decision about what goes into your body, about a medical procedure, if I can use something as so, verbia, so verbose to describe a, an injection. She thought that through, you thought it through on a deep philosophical level. How widely is that level of, of concentration shared by those 80 or 90,000? Um, you know, people are coming at this from lots of different angles. You're informed, you've thought this through. That probably doesn't apply to everybody, every one of those 80 or 90,000. Yeah, so for some people, the, well, the people weigh up the risks and the benefits to themselves. They see the possibility of being sick from COVID. Uh, they see the benefit a vaccine can provide. Um, some are more concerned about uh, potential side effects, which, are, which will take years to, to really know the, the full truth about. Um, but for a lot of people in a vulnerable group, the, the risk benefit is, is definitely for taking the vaccine. However, there are different uh, cultural, historic, um, personal reasons why certain people... And, and, we've, explored, people and we've explored many of those over happy. time. Steve James, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. It's time for the break. Thanks very much for having me on.